giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, and welcome to our week two episode of the Mouth of the South recap that covers events in Texas, Arkansas, Kansas, Oklahoma, Alabama, Missouri, Tennessee, and Louisiana. Tonight, we're going to take a look at week two action in Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, as well as looking forward to all five events coming up in week three in the southern region. We'll also be discussing a yet another Eliminations red card, this time up in Oklahoma. For first updates now, I'm Mark O'Gara. I'm Colin Sherman. And I'm Michael Ray. Let's get started this week by heading to the capital of the Sooner State, where Colorado teams responded to last year's Texas invasion by going to the closest event they could to Texas, since the district model prevents them from actually going to Texas. To give us all the details on how it went, here's Michael. Thanks, Marco. The Oklahoma Regional is the first South Region event outside of first in Texas district system uh, that we are featuring, and it featured 63 teams from six states, one from Arkansas, one from Kansas, one from Texas, and the rest from Missouri, Colorado, and Oklahoma. Each team was given nine matches over the course of Friday and Saturday, resulting in an average ranking score of 1.1. With only four teams climbing to level three, with a total 24 HAB climbs, and the rankings, pretty, the rankings solidified pretty early on. Two teams stole the show all weekend, and you could have guessed one of them was legendary team 1619 Upper Creek Robotics. With a ranking score of 2.88, Upper Creek seeded first by consistently using their suction, club, cl suction cup climber to climb onto level three. Additionally, 1619 repeatedly got within one or two game elements of completing a rocket multiple times. Qualification match 62 finally went their way when second place overall team 2410 Blue Valley Caps Metal Mustang Robotics helped secure a 4RP match. Finishing the rocket with about 20 seconds left in the match, 2410 climbed to level 3 and then 1619 pulled off a buzzer beater level, level 3 climb for the first double level 3 climb in the 2019 season. With their first seed, 1619 selected 4005 Hostel Gato Robotics and 6026 Tiger Strike to be on their alliance. Things got interesting on both sides of the bracket during the semifinals. On the red side of the bracket, semifinal semifinal one match saw the two uh, sorry semifinal one match two saw the red, number one alliance receive a red card for egregious behavior. This led to the best of three and ultimately the first seeded alliance moving moved on. More on that red card later during our discussion topic. On the blue side of the bracket, the sixth place alliance of 4410, the Kraken, 2018 Einstein finalist, 4499, the Highlanders, and 2461 Metal Skins beat out the second place alliance led by 2410 in the best of three using a hatch based cargo ship strategy that surprised the stadium. Finals matches also went to the best of three featuring alliances one and six. Teams played in the finals, teams playing in the finals featured a 50 50 split of Oklahoma and Colorado teams trying to take home the gold. Finals one went to the one alliance, finals two went to the six alliance, and finally, finals three sealed the deal for the first place alliance with a score of 80 to 54. Congrats to team 1619, 4005, 66, and 6026 for their win this past weekend, and to 4499 for their regional finals and chairman's award. Lastly, let's congratulate 2341 for their engineering inspiration award. Nick, or, sorry, Colin, up to you. You might be muted. There we go. Sorry for that. I was <laughs> muted. For our other highlight event of the week, we'll take it over to the first Texas Amarillo event. With only 29 comp teams competing, three of which were part of Team IFI, 148, 1296, and 3310, this event has the highest rate of IFI teams I found at 10.3%. The next highest was Chessy Champs in 2014, with 3 out of 38, or 8.8% of teams being a part of IFI. After that is IRI in 2014, with 5 out of 68, or 7.4% of teams owing allegiance to the Illuminati of first. The biggest difference from those events in, is that the talent pool at Amarillo was not quite as deep. 
At the end of qualifications, each team getting to play a full 12 matches each, it became pretty clear that if you had a black powder-coated lo- robot, you were the teams to beat. Rank first with a ranking score of 2.83 and an undefeated record, Team 148, the Robo Wranglers, went on to pick their all-black everything partner in crime, 3310 Black Hawk Robotics. No surprises there. Both of which showcase, showcase consistent level 3 climbs and the ability to fill up the rocket during qualifications. After them... 6974 Zia Robotics picked up 4153 Project Y. For the third alliance captain, 6315 Error Code 404. They picked up Team 5866 Iron, Ly- Iron Tigans. Excuse me. And the third al- attending member of IFI, Team 1296 Full Metal Jackets, selected 4717 Western Robotics. In the first corner final matchup between the number one alliance, 148 3310, and 2657, against the number eight alliance of 4301 60. Uh, 76, 49, 46, 13. Uh, the first match, the number one alliance truly showed off their full potential and put up an event high score of 95 points without any penalties. In the second match, the number eight alliance changed strategies by subbing out 56, 13 for 63, 61, 33, who played some solid defense against 33, 10. Unfortunately, their good defense was not a, not enough and was negated by 148 and 33, 10's solid performance. And the 27 points of penalty points, resulting in the number one alliance moving on to semis with an event high score of 103 to 42. The next matchup of number four alliance, and number five alliance, were, were two very closely offensive matches that moved into semis. Uh, next, there were two big upsets as the number six alliance, 72 71, 1817, and 26 13, took down the number three alliance. The first match of the series was a very close score of 49 to 55 and Blue's advantage. The next match, 1817 landed a solid hit onto 5783 with their elevator extended, causing them to topple over, on t- and their partner, 6315, stood motionless for the entirety of the match, leaving 5886 1v3 against the Blue Alliance. In a weird turn of events, halfway through the match, 5883 seemed to be dead on the field, but, but were simultaneously pinning uh, 1817 for over 15 seconds. As a result, they were awarded a red card for egregious pinning. Uh, I think... I, I don't know about that call, but it was it resulted in a 71 to zero score, and the number six alliance moves on. There was yet another upset in quarters as the number seven alliance, 75 40, 33 66, 47 99, upset the number two alliance, move on to semis. In the first match, the number two alliance easily outscored the other team. In the next two matchup, Blue Alliance was able to slow down their scoring with some really good defense, and they moved on to semis. In semis, the number one alliance dominated once again despite heavy defense from the number four alliance. Despite their best efforts, the blue alliance could only limit the IFI powerhouse alliance to 78 points to 52 in their first matchup. In the second matchup, there was a, t- a total of 36 penalty points awarded to Red Alliance on top of a very high score, resulting resulting in a event high score of 120 to 46, and moving the number one alliance into the finals. On the other side of the bracket, the number six alliance faced off number seven. The defense play by 1817 was completely interrupting the alert Red Alliance's ability to score into the cargo and and rocketed them into the finals. In finals one, the number seven alliance interesting interestingly opted not to play defense against the number one alliance of 148 and 3310. And as a result, they racked up points in a 94 to 46 victory. In the second finals, things became much more interesting as 1817 played some of the best defense I've seen this year and limited the all-black everything duo to only 61 points, resulting in a very close nail-biter finish. Um, at the end, uh, 1817 was almost able to get to level 2, but it, even even if they had, it wouldn't have been enough, as the number 1 alliance wins by 4 points, 61-57. to 57. Congratulations to the number 1 alliance of 148, 3310, and 2657 on their dominating victory. And a shout-out to 40... Uh, 5417 on winning the district chairmans and 4641 on engineering inspiration. And with that, I'll move it on to uh, Michael, right? Marco. Marco, Marco, Marco sorry. <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, well, while the eyes of the state were all focused on Amarillo and how powerhouses 148 and 3310 were performing, over in San Antonio, the scene was significantly different as 36 mid level and aspiring mid level teams competed in the inaugural San Antonio district event. This event had a rough start as many teams were still working to pass inspection as qualification matches kicked off, causing seven of the first 14 matches in quals to have an alliance that was down at least one robot. However, teams soon got together and things got rolling after that as the Battle of the Cargo Bots hit its stride. Once the qualification dust was all settled, it was Team 5572, the Rosbots, who would end up with the number one seed. 
They would go on to select Rookie 7521 Ultimate Robotics, another strong cargo bot, with their first pick, and round out their alliance via Team 7088, the RoboDogs. With few teams able to really do any hatch panel work, as evidenced by an average of only 2.6 hatch panel points per Qualls match, it would be the number four alliance led by 3035 Droid Rage that would take advantage of their position to pick up 7621 Iron Rangers, which was a team that consistently scored three to four hatches per match, and then the host team, 3240 Team Orion, to complete their alliance. This well-balanced alliance looked a big threat on paper as soon as alliance selection was completed. In an upset-heavy tournament, we saw the number six alliance move through to the semifinals, and then both lower seeds, four and six, successfully took out the one and two seeds, respectively, to face off in some very, very competitive and exciting matches. After each side took a narrow victory in the first two finals matches by three and then five points, the rubber match went back and forth with some dedicated cargo scoring and alternating defense. As time wound down, some last-second HAB heroics by 3035 Droid Rage and 5754 gave them a three HAB point advantage and proved enough for the number four alliance to squeak out a tie and keep them in contention, opening the door to a rare finals four match. In overtime, the number four alliance would slowly pull away and took home the win with a score of 63 to 48. Congratulations to 3481 Bronkbots for their gold silver cling bling as they take home the chairman's award and their finalist medal. All right, now I'll recap the Arkansas Rock City Regional with 60 teams in attendance. Absent from this region this year are the previous champions, 16, Team 16 Bomb Squad and 3310 Blackhawk Robotics. As a result, this left it open for a new set of teams to take the banner home. Out of qualifications, it was 5006 Apophis who ranked number one with their polarizing swerve stilt climb and a smooth drive and smooth driving to earn them a ranking score average of 2.66. They went on to pick uh, team uh, 3937 Breakaway for performing very strongly throughout qualifications. They were one of the few robots in the world capable of, of solo filling a rocket, and it came as no surprise to see them picked up first. Quarterfinals went on with zero with a uh, Few upsets, except for number five beating number four due to some strong defensive strategy. There were a few. There were several matchups that went to third matches, uh, as as many of the lines were very evenly matched at this event. Uh, in semis, the number five alliance of 40, 87, uh, 77, 67, and 4603 stunned the number one alliance of 5006, uh, 3937, and 1982 with some great defense by 4087. And as a result, and because of 1982 getting stuck on the in the on the have two in the second match, as a result, the number seven alliance won the series two to two to zero and moved on to the finals. On the other side of bracket, the number three alliance of 3039, 2992, and 2080 battled it out in two very close matches with the number two alliance of 323, 1939, and 6131. Unfortunately, in the second match, 1939 died midway through the match. And as a result, the number three alliance was able to win the series 2-0 and move on to face the number five alliance in the finals. In finals, Team 2080 of Alliance 3 made it ugly for the other alliance with some great defense that made it very difficult for the number two alliance to score any cargo in the cargo ship. On top of that, the number three alliance was consistently able to score more in-game points with 2092 making it to level three and 3029 making it to level two. As a result, they took the series 2-0. Congratulations to the Arkansas Rock City champions for 2019, 3039, 2992, and 2080. Uh, team, t- uh, uh, we also have a uh, gold, silver, cling, bling uh, for, uh, I think it was 3039 for winning Engineer Inspiration. And to close it off, I want to congratulate 3039 for winning the Chairman's Award. Uh, that's it for the event recaps tonight, and we'll move on to our discussion topic. Yes, so as Michael mentioned for our discussion topic this week, we figured we'd continue with our longstanding tradition of discussing alliances receiving red cards and elims. Um, So as you can see here from the video, this week's episode takes us to the Oklahoma Regional and the semifinal three, which saw the number one alliance led by 1619 Upper Creek be handed a red card due to an interaction between 6026 Tiger Strike from the Red Alliance and 3247 Robopack from Blue. Rumor is that the red card was issued because the referees judged 6026 to go into 3247's frame perimeter, causing damage to their belly pan, causing their ba- causing 3247's battery to come loose. Uh, 
Uh, we've taken a lot of looks at this already and we're talking about it earlier. So Colin, why don't you start us off with your thoughts on this call? Yeah, so I was watching this uh, this match live because obviously 1619 high profile team. Uh, you want you want to see if they're going to get upset at, at any point. And uh, at first, I didn't I didn't really see much of anything, so I was really surprised to see a red car get pulled out. Um, but it seemed like both the ref and the head ref were looking right at the situation where uh, the the red alliance defender uh, ends up hitting the blue alliance robot. And immediately after, the robot falls out of the, uh, the battery falls out of the robot, and the robot lies dead. So obviously, you, you kind of want to call some kind of penalty because you don't like to see a contact and then a robot dies and nothing happens. Um, so I, I kind of agree that something needs to be called, but I think we we've been talking about this a while. And G19, a red card is a bit too far for what we think for for what what actually happens. Uh, does someone else want to jump in? Sure, Colin. Uh, so I was actually uh, at the Oklahoma event. I wasn't watching this event, uh, this specific match live. Uh, but after talking to a bunch of people, what uh, Marco and Colin said so far is correct. Tyler, if you could restart the video at th or the clip at the very beginning or I, uh, or show a, a still. The very, very beginning of that clip, you see 60, uh, 6026 run into. Um, hold on, I, I lost the team numbers here. Um, 3247. 3247. Yeah, thank you. And the robot kind of gets propped up a little bit. If I slow it down really, really, really slowly and start looking at the beginning of that frame, I really think 3247's battery is actually already on the floor uh, at that point and is just being dragged around. The collision from 6026 and 3247, it pops it up, and at that point, um, the, the battery can slide almost underneath 3247's robot and uh, then disjoint the battery connection from their from the robot and uh, and go be dead on the field. So um, I don't think a red card was deserved at all because 6026 was just playing some defense and 3247 accidentally popped up. Uh, if there was some damage to their belly pan, it was well before that hit. Um, that hit was just what kind of jarred everything loose. And then uh, lastly, just teams beware of your battery. Make sure you secure it. I know we've had problems with our battery being secure in the past. So to avoid any of these situations, if you guys can just take that red Velcro that you get in the kit of parts and just lock your battery down um, with some aluminum or, I mean, Velcro tape, multiple things. The more things that secure your battery, the better. Yeah, I mean, I think it's easy, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking here, but I think the the G19, G20 differences, I think, is a big one for me. There's certainly impact there. Um, I agree, as we were looking through the stills, it looks like that battery was either dragging or had come out before that initial impact. The initial impact is bumper on bumper. It looks fairly legal. Um, but uh, worse, uh, G19 requires uh, a strategy aimed at destruction or inhibition of robots. Uh, I don't know how you say that that robot had that strategy intending to do that. Um, but... Uh, you know, for for us, I think it would have been a yellow card after uh, a yellow card at best. But um, there you have it. So, um, moving on here from our discussion topic with week two now in the books, FRC top twenty five voting for this week now has closed. Let's take a look at the ten highest ranked teams from the southern region. In the number one spot, no surprise to anyone, uh, the house of hashtag all black everything one forty eight Robo Wranglers. In the second position, thirty three ten Black Hawk Robotics. Uh, 16, Bomb Squad at number 3. 2410, the Metal Mustangs, number 4. Number 5 goes to 3039, Wildcat Robotics. In the 6th spot, the 3rd IFI team, 1296, Full Metal Jackets, followed by 3937, Breakaway from Arkansas. 4005, Hostile Gato Robotics. Uh, 323, Lights Out from Arkansas in the ninth spot. And 2461, Metal Skins at number 10. Um, what do you think, guys? Any comments, anything that sticks out to you? Just an editorial comment uh, um, real quick to jump in, guys. Uh, so 16, even though they competed outside of the region, uh, we do include teams based on their home region or home state. Uh, that's why 16 is showing up for this list and not others. Uh, so just taking a look at this list, we're going to kind of keep it short since we're running on time. 2410 I thought was uh, pretty cool to see up there. We got to play with them at Oklahoma. Um, they're an awesome team. They did really well in the Rocket. Uh, I'd say 39-37, way underrated. They were a great team. Uh, not shown on this list is 5006, also ranked first at Arkansas. Really solid team, great driving, great level three climb. I'm really surprised to not see them on this list. And I was just glad to see Arkansas well represented here and, and getting away from the Texas heavy uh, first mm -hmm. couple of weeks we've seen. 
All right, let's uh, let's close up the show by looking at some of the upcoming events this week. Marco, want to start us off? Sure, happy to do it. Um, week three is going to see us compete down in Channel View District. It'll be our first look at many great Texas teams, including 231 High Voltage, 1477 Texas Torque, uh, 3735 Vortex, 4587 Jersey Voltage, and uh, 5414 Paradox. We'll also see if Kryptonite has been able to add to their unbag time after Austin uh, and see if they can pull off that level three HAB climb, which proved elusive at their first event. All right, I'll go ahead and preview the first ever event in the Sunflower State at, Har at the Heartland Regional in o Olathe, Kansas. Uh, there are uh, 36 teams going to battle it out to see who can punch their ticket at the champs. Some notable teams are 1710, 1730, 1986, 1987, 3284, and 4522, all of which have had solid showings at Kansas City Regionals in the past few years. And... Uh, the, the, the one big team that you should be looking out for is 1986, who have yet to reveal the robot, but have consistently delivered high-caliber robots. Uh, chairman's at this event is also really competitive. 1710, uh, 2200, and 3284 should really battle out, and it should be interesting who should win those awards. Uh, the next event I will cover is St. Louis for this weekend. This year, there is an absence of many powerhouse teams that are typically come to this top event. Uh, uh, no, notably, like uh, uh, 2481 and 2550, 51, 2451. Uh, the top teams of this event this year are 1501 Thrust, 1706 Ratchet Rockers, and 3339 uh, Robot Lions. Uh, the absence of Powerhouse really opens up this event, and I'm looking forward to see who, who takes some of the blue banner this year. All right, taking a look at the uh, Rocket City in Alabama. Uh, we got 55 teams attending this uh, this regional, one from Brazil, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, your top three teams at this event are probably going to be Team Rush 27. Uh, they are the winner at Kettering, my alma mater uh, team. They won the Autonomous Award as well, so they should be coming out pretty strong. Uh, interesting that they did a district, regional district combo. Uh, you got Bomb Squad 16. They were semifinalists at Midwest, winning the industrial design. They also should be pretty strong. And last but not least is Cyber Blue 234. They were finalists at the St. Joe, Indiana um, district event, also winning the Autonomous Award. Uh, looking ahead at the Plano district event back in Texas, 37 teams from the Dallas area are competing at Pl uh, the Plano Senior High School. Uh, three teams that stand out in my mind. 2714 Barbecue with their split from uh, from uh, Allsparks looking to improve upon their performance at the Austin District uh, with improved rocket play and more uh, hatch functionality. Fingers crossed, a working level three climber. Uh, last year's Rookie Sensation 7179 Crossfire will be making their first appearance and hoping to zip into finals matches with quick cycle times and efficient driving. And last but not least, look out for 5431 Titan Robotics with the robot Astrius, I think I pronounced that right, uh, as they compete for the gold while dedicating their season to recent Titan graduate Jordan Grant, who passed away last year. All right, folks, that's it for us. We got to go. Thank you, everyone who has watched. On behalf of myself, Michael, Colin, our producer, Tyler, I want to say thank you for tuning in. Huge shout out to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is We the North. Talk to you all next week on the Mouth of the South recap. Bye, everyone. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.